Welcome to the Elevator World podcast. The April issue of Elevator World focuses on education and training. Here is the editor's overview, Training the Long Road, by Risha Sturgeon Hendrick, read by Caleb Givens. I read recently in Engineering News Record that safety is often handled with, quote, a microwave mentality when it is really a crockpot problem, end quote. In other words, it takes time to do it right. Education in our industry is the same sort of problem. It takes time to train people the right way. Unfortunately, we face a black hole called recession retirement that many of our best technicians have fallen into, and there are many newbies coming in now who need years of training. This process won't be hurried. This month, we focus on education and training and have a wide range of articles from the U.S., Europe, and beyond. Louis Bialy has written Education in the Worldwide Elevator Industry and covers the best practices internationally. He notes that in Europe and Japan, much like the U.S., technicians have extensive training programs available. The Korean Lyft College in South Korea and Northampton University in the U.K. provide engineering courses, while China, Japan, and the U.S. have similar methods for training inspectors. Speaking for the National Elevator Industry Educational Program, or NEIEP, my old friend John O'Donnell, we are both third generation elevator industry, spoke with Elevator World on what's next for NEIEP. O'Donnell says that recent increases in hiring from New York to California to Miami have the program training more than 1,000 new hires with another 4,000 in the apprenticeship program. This, he noted, was the largest since the start of the recession. Dr. John White makes an interesting case for distance learning in a traditional classroom may not be necessary. Distance learning, White says, goes back to the correspondence courses in the 1920s, and recent surveys show no difference in test scores of classroom learners. In fact, some studies suggest that one of the benefits of distant learning, in addition to lower costs for students and corporations, may be higher achievement. We also have contributions from Brett Enels, update from Europe on new rulings from the European Court of Justice and from Jose Maria Campagni navigating the winds of change on training managers how to treat each customer's situation as unique. Speaking of training, our continuing education article this month, Servicing of Hydraulic Elevators After Flooding by Parag Mehta is timely as many in the industry are dealing with floods, tornadoes, and melting spring snow. Meta offers step-by-step instructions for cleaning and notes which components might need to be replaced. He believes climate change will cause more flooding with which our industry will have to deal. Special training and clothing was needed to withstand the sub-zero temperature, high humidity, snow, and wind on the job site at Mont Blanc in France. Schindler installed an elevator on top of the world that thousands used to gain access to one of Europe's top tourist attractions. Step into the Void, a glass box over a 3,842-meter crevice. Our managing director for Elevator World Turkey, Bulent Yilmaz, reported on Lift Tech Expo 2016 in Cairo, where we debuted Elevator World Middle East. With many projects on the drawing boards in the Middle East and North Africa, this expo drew an impressive crowd, with companies from Turkey and China leading the way. Big Data We are hearing that term more and more now, and I thought it just meant too much information. Dr. Roy Smith theorizes in Data-Driven Maintenance that the collection of massive amounts of data combined with cloud computing and machine learning may change the industry by predicting when maintenance will be needed. On our cover is an escalator truss, in particular the framework for amazing escalators in Hamburg, Germany. Our senior associate editor, Lee Friedland, writes about the arched escalators at the Elm Philharmonic Hall, the longest in Western Europe. The very unusual equipment that carries riders through an 80-meter-long tunnel for a -a two-and-a-half-minute ride was specially designed by Kone. Passengers entering at the bottom can't see the top because of the curve. Periodically, we take the temperature of the construction industry to see how we are doing, Dodge released a report recently naming the New York City metropolitan area as both the largest and fastest growing metro area for construction with 35 billion US dollars in new starts in 2015. 
a 66% increase over 2014. Other areas showing robust growth are Miami, Orlando, and Kansas City. The increase highlights our industry's need for training and ongoing continuing education. That was Caleb Givens reading the editor's overview, Training the Long Road. For more industry-related information, visit us at elevatorworld.com and follow us on Twitter at Elevator World.